Hello, this is Ms. Black with Open Campus at Bossier Parish Community College. This is UpMath 099, Algebra 2. We are on Module 2 called Addition and Subtraction of Polynomial Expressions. Before we can actually begin to add and subtract, though, we have to go over some terminology. You have to recall the words collect like terms we talked about in the previous module. Remember, like terms in algebra mean the variables are identical. You look at the letters, they have to be exactly alike. So an example of like terms is 5a and 3a. And think about it in real life. That's like 5 apples plus 3 apples. We could put those together. Terms that are not alike would have different variables, such as 5a and 3b. That would be 5 apples and 3 bananas. And you couldn't put that together. They're not alike. Also, negative 6a squared and 3a are not alike. Even though they each have an a, one of the a's is a square, has an exponent of 2. The other a has an invisible exponent of 1. And they are then not identical. They're not alike. So we couldn't put those together. That would be in real life like having negative 6 airplanes and 3 apples. Once we know about like terms, then we're going to collect them. Collect means to put together things that are the same. So let's look at a polynomial expression. 5ab minus 2 minus 3ba minus 9. There is 1, 2, 3, 4 terms there, 4 monomials. We are looking to put together the ones that are alike to group them. Well, it's quite obvious we have two numbers, constants, so we would put them together. We have negative 2 and negative 9. And if you take a negative 2 and put it with a negative 9, you would add it because they're the same sign. Think of it this way. I lost $2. I lost $9. Well, how much did you lose? You lost $11. So negative 2 and negative 9 would make negative 11 if you put them together. Now... We're looking for other like terms, and this is not so clear. I have 5ab and negative 3ba. Well, that doesn't sound alike, but in all honesty, that they are alike. Let's talk about why. Remember, a term is connected by multiplication. So let's go back to third grade and think. In third grade, if I wrote 2 times 3, what would the answer be? 6. If you wrote... 3 times 2, what would the answer be? Well, it would also be 6. So we learned back in elementary school, it doesn't matter what order you multiply numbers in, you get the same result. That was called the commutative property of multiplication. Well, that's what's going on here. In algebra, you've got to recognize that AB and BA are both connected by multiplication. So they mean the same thing. Now, it's important in algebra, we do put our letters in alphabetical order. So we'd rather write AB and not write BA. So I'm going to rearrange that order. Now those terms look exactly alike. So I have 5AB, and I'm going to minus 3AB. 5 is positive, 3 is negative. Different signs you subtract and give the answer the sign of larger. So 5 minus 3 is 2AB. Now, all we got to do is put these terms in the correct order when we write our answer. Remember, we have to be in descending order. So we always put our variables first, 2ab, and the last thing we write is our constant, negative 11. Okay, let's look at another example in our notes. So again, if we look, the next set of examples for addition have something different. They have parentheses in them. Well, that's going to cause a problem because you cannot add like terms if they're stuck in a parentheses, which is a grouping symbol. So our job is going to be to get rid of those parentheses. Well, you just can't erase them to get rid of them. You have to follow order of operations. And one thing you should have learned by now is that in algebra, parentheses means to do multiplication. So let's look at example four together. I have 3y minus 4 in parentheses, 6 minus 7y squared in parentheses, and y squared plus 5 in parentheses. According to order of operations, we're supposed to put together things that are alike. According to order of operations, we're supposed to do p parentheses first. You can't do anything inside of here. 
3, y, and 4 are not alike. You can never take a number and add it to a variable. Same thing here. Can't take the number 6 and add it to a variable. Same thing here. You can't take 5 and add it to a variable. So we can't work inside the parentheses. So what we got to do is get rid of them. And parentheses always means in math multiplication. In front of every parentheses, there's always a number. And that's the number you're going to multiply by. So if we look at the first set of parentheses, there is no number we see. It's understood to be 1. So we're about to take the 1 and multiply it to just what's inside the parentheses. That is called the distributed property of multiplication. Think of in real life. Distribute means like distributing a flyer to give to everybody. So we're going to take that one and distribute it, which means we're going to multiply it to each term. Not just the first one, to each one. So 1 times 3y is 3y. 1 times a negative 4 is a negative 4. We're going to move on to the second set of parentheses. Again, there's an invisible number in front. It's a 1. That 1 is positive. So we're going to do 1 times 6, get positive 6. We're going to do 1 times a negative 7y, get negative 7y squared. If you look, we recall, multiplying by 1 does not change what we have. Just like in arithmetic, 1 times 3 will always be 3. But what it does here in algebra, by multiplying, by distributing, you got rid of the parentheses. Now if we go to the third parentheses, we do have a number distributed. It's a negative 2. So negative 2 times y squared is negative 2y squared. Negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10. Now if you look, we have freed all our terms. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 monohyls. Now let's find the ones that are alike and put them together. Again, because we already know in our head the final answer has to be in descending order, why don't we find the terms with the biggest exponents first to put together? So if I look, here's our first term, negative 7y squared, and the next term, negative 2y squared. It makes sense to put them together first. Because these coefficients are both negative, we would add, and we'd get negative 9y squared. After y squared should come y to the first. So I look. Here's my term with y to the first. Remember that one is understood. He has nothing else to combine with, so we're just going to write it down. And remember, that 3 is positive, so we write plus 3y. You cannot forget that positive sign. You have to separate the terms by adding and subtracting. The last thing we would put together are the constants, the numbers that stand alone. So if you look, we have negative 4 plus 6. They're opposite signs. We would subtract, give the sign a larger. That would be positive 2. We have positive 2 with a negative 10. Again, we would subtract because of different signs. Give the sign a larger. That would mean negative 8. So when we take this polynomial expression and put all the like terms together, our answer would be negative 9y squared plus 3y minus 8. And we are in the correct descending order. Okay. Well, that concludes today's lesson on addition of polynomial expressions. Thank you.